Welcome back to the HL Vlog. It's been a while. Uh, been busy, been busy, busy traveling, expanding, and all those things. But today I want to talk about something we started doing in uh, January. It's our fundraising. So this is going to be our first equity fundraising we're doing as a company for the last uh, seven years now we've been in business. The way we funded ARED so far has been through grants, competitions, some debts, but we haven't got any equity investment. And uh, we started to, you know, um, look at equity investment uh, late last year, third quarter of last year, just because we want to now start feeding and fueling that expansion plan. And we learned, well, I learned a few key things, right, that I want to share today. Actually, three key things that I've learned um, about investment and raising capital, especially if you want to raise capital above one million plus. So let's get started on this. Henry Yakarundi, the innovator behind innovative the entrepreneur from Rwanda. Pour en parler, Henry Nyakarundi. Pour en parler, l'équipage reçoit son concepteur, Monsieur Henry Nyakarundi. So if you look at the, 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 the capital raise right now in Africa, it's booming. It's booming. Our companies are raising. Um, you know, uh, I think we're doubling up every year now from one to two billion. It's still peanuts when we look at the continental, the continental level. It's peanuts. Uh, Israel, small country like that, uh, raised uh, so far this year five point something billion dollars. Those are companies from Israel. That's one country of six or seven million people, if I'm not mistaken. Don't quote me on that, but a few million. I know it's less than Rwanda. Five billion. Uh, for startups in in Africa, 56 countries. We're talking about two something billion. But hey, you gotta start somewhere, right? You know, you can't you can't uh, you can't just build and, and get to the sky overnight. It takes time, right? But it's when, when you start peeling the layers of this investment funding aspect, you start discovering a uh, few things. But today, I want to share some of the strategy. We using at ARED to raise capital. Uh, we halfway done on our fundraising, and I'll definitely do another video when we close. And if we don't uh, close, then hey, maybe uh, the strategy. But I'm, I'm highly confident we'll close. Strategy number one that I discovered that we had to adopt also. So this is not to knock down anybody. Most people, actually, all the companies that I know. Not necessarily personally, but I've studied and looked at, have group entity outside Africa. Those are companies that raise half a million plus. And if you look at the fintech industry, it's no different. All the, the companies in Nigeria, for example, um, uh, uh, what's that, Paystack and all those things, they all have entity in the U.S. then. But some of them also have entity in London. So that's the strategy we also incorporate. We incorporate in Delaware uh, to start our fundraising. And guess what? It opens the scope of a lot more investors because the reality is most investors don't like to invest in African companies uh, or I should say African entities. Why? It's very simple. It's a question of trust. Oh, we don't trust those companies. Oh, we don't know what you're going to do with the money. It, 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 I won't say it's BS because you're dealing with people most of the time are not don't know anything about Africa uh, but looking for opportunities worldwide you know so the ecosystem it, it's really misunderstood and and this concept that we, we highly corrupt is still ingrained in a lot of investors and the problem with local investors or investors um, that have offices in Africa, uh, they still don't make the final decision. Most of those decision makers are outside the continent, you know. So when you see, uh, I'm not going to drop names, but a lot of those, because there's investment fund now from Japan, China, US, uh, England, France, you know, Partec and all those things. But most of those decisions are made outside, right? Uh, uh, they don't make the final decision on the African continent. 
So there might be somebody who do the due diligence, so on and so forth, but they don't make, don't be fooled, they don't make that decision. And when you start opening up, and a lot of investment funds on the continent are not specialized. You know, uh, they still, you still have a lot of investment that kind of tap into pretty much anything. In the U.S., that's the market I know most. You have very specialized investment fund that only invest in specific things. Because you also want investors that understand what you're doing, right? If you're in the hardware business, very niche, very unique, very high tech, they call it deep tech. That's the space we in. And you're talking to an investors that are not necessarily into that space, but um, are open to listen to you. Well, most of the things you're going to talk about will go above their head. So nine out of 10, they're not going to be interested. At least that's been my experience. But now we register in Delaware. We've been able to talk to SoftBank twice now. Um, we've been able to talk to, we couldn't, we wouldn't have been able to talk to those guys if we were an African entity. We've been able to tap into Silicon Valley investors because now the entity is registered in the U.S. So they're not investing in an African entity. They, they're going to be investing in a U.S. entity. It can go with London, it can go with Asia, so on and so forth. So this is the strategy most companies are doing. To raise real capital let's be truly honest and if they're not telling you that then uh, they either don't want you to know the information or they're lying to you so that's just the reality on the ground as of now right it might change in the future and it will the ecosystem is you know is, is evolving obviously i know rather just pass the new laws on investment but all those things takes time and if you're really for looking for some real money and and spread your your, 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 your reach as i said uh, so that's the first thing, right? That, that's a, one of the strategy that we adopted and most companies have. So the second strategy uh, that I want to talk about, and I've been talking about this for everything, whether it's finding partners, whether it's scaling up, whether it's, it works for everything and anything. It's network. Finding someone or a group of people that are already connected in those funds I can do an intro. You can even hire, but I don't recommend hiring because uh, it, it invest. I mean, a lot of those VCs are personal basis. So you got to network, meet people, be part of um, vlogs, listen who's talking about what, so on and so forth. Because now you, if you have an entity overseas, you're open to those uh, in investment ecosystem from those th that region. So. Now, how do you get people investment fund from Silicon Valley to, to take a look at what you're doing? Of course, you have to do your research. You have to know who you're targeting. You have to understand your business and who's doing what to your hardware component. You have to find investors that are really interested in that hardware component. I've talked to many investors. They don't like the hardware component of our business. They just don't. And I understand that's not their, their core uh, interest. So. Uh, you have to do your due diligence, you research yourself. It's time consuming raising capital, but you need to find somebody that can open doors for you. You can find them on LinkedIn, you can find them on um, on social, other social group. Um, you know, I participate in a lot of speaking engagements and I meet people like this. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's going to minimize the timeline it takes. The good thing I like about the U.S., is most investment fund, at least the one we've applied, you can apply directly from their website. I have never seen that anywhere else on the local level, on the continent, in Africa at least. Most of the investors, uh, most of the website of those investors, I usually have an email, info that at something, something, but they actually have a form in those investment funds in the US where you can attach your pitch deck and they even tell you at the bottom somewhere, they're going to return your call or return, um, give you feedback basically within two weeks. And most of them do that. That's been my personal experience. Uh, I don't know why we don't do it on the continent or at least why not investment fund do it on the continent. Maybe there's less investment funds. So they're scared of the flood of, of, of emails or phone they're going to get. Maybe. I don't know. But, uh, but find somebody can open doors for you, right? And that's very difficult to find because um, that person has to trust you enough 
to do the intro that person has to believe that you're the right person because you know humans we humans man you can write somebody yeah i saw you connected to this guy that guy can you introduce me please no it ain't gonna happen nine zero point zero zero one percent of the time they're not gonna do it that's just the, the reality on the ground but if you build that up you know report and if if you also have a track record of what you've done online website videos that will ease up on the stuff i've done two three calls before i ask someone um to introduce me to somebody else right in the network i've, I've tried to share videos of what we've done of, of competition we've won of um i always use for example our microsoft videos micro microsoft did with our partnership uh, to ease people you know you have to build that trust that's that's the, the main thing so but, but find someone that can open doors for you and that will take time on itself but you're going to need that to speed up the process in the long run so last but not least you know i think that's that's just the, 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 the most of you uh, um, probably know but but it's very important you know prepare your documentation you have to spend some time on the documentation right and 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 have uh so what you need basically is you need the, the basic documentation you need the pitch deck obviously you need uh an executive summary that's also very important and then you need to have all the the, the, the documentation your financial your projections already done prepared ready to go you don't want to fall into this trap of hey i um I'll get back to you with developing. You have to show that you're ready. You're ready to get investment. You have to show that, hey, this this is, uh, I'm not BSing around, right? Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I've done all the, re I mean, not the research, but I've, I've done all the work. I've got all the documentation prepared. If you're interested, boom, I can send it in, in, in a quick, uh, um, very quickly. And that's very important, guys, because a lot of time I talk to startups and, and listen, it's been seven years and we've, like I said, we raised competition grants, so on and so forth, but we never raised equity. I'm a big fan of, of bootstrapping. If I can do everything I need without raising capital, man, that's my first option. But of course, in technology, uh, it's a little bit more complicated. My previous business, I didn't raise money. Uh, and I was generating close to a million dollar a year by myself. I was in logistic. Um, and, and I did that for six years. And by myself, I had no employee, no, no, no nothing, by myself, right? And I started with two, two grand, but I was in the US, it was in, uh, you know, trucking business. Uh, but that was, you know, that, that, that taught me a lot, right? And I always trying to find ways to minimize my um, my need of having to reach out to investors, so on and so forth. Uh, because again, you know, when you bring investors, it's no longer your company, you have to answer to them, so on and so forth. And again, you know, most of the time, if they're the right investor, they bring a lot of value. So we also need to invest not just for the money, but also as we scale to build more partnership because we're a B2B company, uh, so on and so forth. But get your documentation right. And if you don't have a lot of money and you're in the impact space, find an accelerated program that can help you get those documentation right. There's a, a, a great, great organization I highly recommend. I did a vlog about them before, but I always like to plug them in because they've been crucial for our documentation. Moving worlds, where they match you with not just talent, but people that have 15, 20 years experience in specific space. Uh, they match with those people to help you in a specific need you have for two, usually 30, 60 days, or even 90 days, depending on the availability of that person. Movingworld.org is one of the, uh, I think, is, is, is one of the organization that is, um, that, that really going to change certain things because now you're tapping into people that have a lot of experience that have raised money in other businesses or that have 
M and A, M and E uh, um, experience. For example, for us, we're looking for somebody merging acquisition experience, right? And they found somebody who had like 15 years. Those are valuable guys. That's 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 priceless. And and to to get access to those people by yourself will be almost impossible. And they have a platform to help you with that. So those are the three key strategy I highly recommend. I'll definitely do another vlog when we close our round, like I said. And uh, good luck, man. And uh, please, if you have any question, put it on the on the comment. Um, if you need to know some some more uh, um, platforms that help in different areas, I would love to share.